Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. I just want to continue the series concerning scholarship and atheism. And one of the scholars that atheists use quite a lot of is Bart Ehrman. If you go on a lot of YouTube channels and a lot of um, a lot of um, what can I say, uh, blog TV shows and um, atheist websites, uh, YouTube videos, they will be constantly quoting Bart Ehrman. Now I can speak with authority because I've been studying theology for over 10 years at academic level and sat with the best academic theologians in the around the world and I can tell you categorically that his scholarship is extremely poor. He might have a reputation and he might be known as uh, a great scholar but I'll give you an example of the tremendous weakness of uh, Bart Herman's scholarship. He talks a lot about um, the text of scripture as, as changed so much and a lot of that a lot of his theory is based on new research that he's done and some of his colleagues uh, by looking at how scribes in the ancient world copied manuscripts the problem is with his theories is it's not wide enough or extensive extensive enough research that he's done on the topic I'm not saying that he's, he's not well uh, informed on the actual manus ancient, ancient Greek uh, manuscripts etc I'm not saying that but what I'm saying is his new ideas about how scribes copied text is is really and I'm, I really mean this is very very poor it's not poor it, it, it it's just it's just a tragedy that he's pumping out the ideas that he's been pumping out based on so little evidence so for example he based his whole theory on how manuscripts are written and copied by looking at some obscure scribe in Egypt and seeing how that scribe copied uh, text and then from that one scribe he comes up with a whole theory and conclusion about how text are copied so in other words what I'm saying is when he's talking about textual criticism you know a lot of his ideas are very subjective they're not rooted in objectivity and the other th second thing is he he just makes the problems bigger than they actually are there are many uh, textual variations in manuscripts but then they're not any big issue there's only a few texts that actually are a big issue but the thousands of the uh, variations in texts uh, are down to a comma or, a, or a, a, just one letter so there's no big problem and we have so many manuscripts ancient manuscripts that we can piece together the problems and it's, it's just not a problem that he makes it out to be the so that's on his textual criticism and you know Bruce Metzer who he trained under who Bart Ehrman trained under at Princeton Theological Seminary um, you know he was a world authority on textual criticism differed from Bart Ehrman took more he wasn't completely conservative but took more of a conservative stance than actual Bart Ehrman the other thing I want to say about Bart Ehrman is he presents himself as an objective scholar however however uh, every time he gives a lecture he always tells his testimony so what is a scholar who's supposedly objective always telling his testimony why because he has an agenda to change people's opinion from the position that they they have so he's not as objective as he makes himself out to be the strongest argument that Bart Ehrman uses against Christianity really is when he comes to the resurrection he likes to show that that there are contradictions and there are disparities within the text of the Gospels so he will say that um, you know when was actually Jesus uh, crucified because there seems to be a difference in the in the text of, of the Gospels but actually if you do uh, research and you look at the intricate language of the of the Gospels you know when it talks about Passover and things like that if you read in context 
you can actually answer about them. It's a bit complex to go into detail today, but uh, I would encourage you to go back to the channel Bart Ehrman Project um, on YouTube, Bart Ehrman Project, and you, they'll give you a bit more detail about what I'm talking about. Um, but also, you know, it'll, it'll show contradictions uh, in the resurrection accounts and contradictions in, in the gospel accounts. And, you know, a lot of those contradictions are um, heightening things that are just looking at things from a different perspective. You know, Gospel of John is looking at it from a different perspective than the Gospel of Mark. And they are similar in many ways, but Bart Ehrman comes along and doesn't choose to look at the similarities. He, lo he tries to look at the differences and say the differences are contradictions when they're not contradictions, but they're just a different way of looking at things. Um, but then, you know, he'll go into specifics on the resurrection and say, you know, there are contradictions in the accounts there. And the answer to that is what I would call plausibility structure. Mathematicians in modern times work on what is called a plausibility structure. And that is to say they're not as dogmatic about certainty in mathematical knowledge. They're, so long as they have a general evidence for what they're saying mathematically speaking that's a plausibility structure and basically you know there's a strong plausibility structure within the gospel narratives you know there's solid evidence to show where the gospels are talking about the life and death and resurrection of Jesus it's been verified objectively from other historical uh, sources etc and so we know that the plausibility structure is is solid uh, concerning the Christian faith. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I have to answer every nook and cranny of of the the text. You know, I am not perfect. I don't know everything. I'm not going to be able to harmonise perfectly all those gospel accounts. All I have to do is say I've got solid evidence for my plausibility structure. And I have solid evidence for the plausibility structure of the Gospels. We have solid evidence for Jesus dying. We have solid evidence for him being put in a tomb. We have solid evidence that he rose from the dead. Now, I can't put everything, every minutiae detail of all those accounts together. Maybe it possibly can, but it's quite complex of different people coming backwards and forwards. But I can categorically say there is a solid plausibility structure of evidence that Jesus died and rose again. And what Bart Ehrman is trying to do is use minute problems to overturn solid biblical and historical evidence. And people buy it because it seems to be so convincing what he's saying, but actually it's not. It's actually highlighting some minor problems into big problems when they're only minor problems. Um, I'll just tell you the story of, I've said it before, there's this, there, was two uh, there was two philosophers, um, Karl Popper and Wittgenstein, in a room with some theologians. And Karl Popper, uh, Wittgenstein got a hot poker and brandished it at Karl Popper, the philosopher, Afterwards, the theologians saw this. Afterwards, they reported what they saw, and they all reported it in different ways. But they'd seen the same event. That's what you have in the Gospels. They report the same event, but each one is looking at it from a different perspective. My conclusion is Bart Ehrman's scholarship is not as objective, it's not as detailed, and is popularistic, looking for the popular um attention and is not really honest serious scholarship and I really believe that and that's someone who's read a lot of academic theology the atheist community lap this kind of stuff up and they are pumping this out on YouTube and their websites but they are very hardly any of them are actually trained in this kind of stuff and they're not able to spot the issues that I've spotted today for you. Thank you.